Welcome to part 4 of the Bagot tutorial. At this point you should have viewed part 1 for a general introduction to the Bagot tool and have access to the Bagot program in the Java runtime environment. These may be installed on your local computer or available via the portable drive that is being used to transfer files. In this section we're going to demonstrate how you can receive and verify bags and unpack the files from the bag for your use. While not a prerequisite for part 4, you may also have viewed part 3 to learn how to create bags. This section will take approximately 30 minutes to complete. Returning briefly to our general process flow diagram, we described how there are a couple of alternatives for transferring files, either through the network using a shared network drive that's accessible to both the sender and the receiver, or using a detachable storage device such as a USB portable drive or USB flash drive. Our example in this section will illustrate the use of a USB portable drive, which can be detached from the data sender's computer, transferred, and then attached to the data receiver's computer to receive the files. The portable drive will be seen to be attached via the G drive in the following examples. In this demonstration, the Bagot application and the Java runtime have also been installed on the portable drive, and you will see evidence of this as we go to run the Bagot command. As we review the sequence of steps required to create a bag, in this section we are going to focus on the right side of this picture where the data receiver is going to retrieve the bag from the remote device and unpack the bag so she can use the files. The files may be transferred via a USB attached storage device such as a portable disk or flash drive, or they could also be transferred via a network shareable drive that is accessible to both the data creator and the data receiver. There's basically three steps involved for the data receiver to receive, verify, and unpack the bag, illustrated on our slide as steps 6, 7, and 8. The receiver will first copy the bag from the remote disk device to her local disk. And then she will verify that the bag's contents are valid, meaning that the files have not been corrupted or altered through the course of the transfer. And finally, in step 8, she'll unpack the bag to get the files out of the bag for her local use. Step 6 and 8 she'll be able to perform using her Windows Explorer. And for step 7, to verify the bag she'll need to run the bag verify valid command through a DOS command window to perform the bag verification. You'll see that the slide also recommends that you run a virus check. This is a recommended best practice whenever you are importing files from an external source. And we will not be demonstrating this in this tutorial. You may want to check your virus check program to see if you can manually invoke it, or check with your IT support representative if you need assistance in accessing a virus checker program to run a virus check against files on your local system. Recall the Bagot is a command-driven utility. It provides an option to create bags and another option to verify bags. Running the Verify Valid option on a bag when it is received is important to verify that none of the files have been altered during the file transfer process, which is important in ensuring the authenticity or integrity of the received files. The general syntax to verify a bag is the bag command, followed by the Verify Valid option, followed by the name of the bag you are validating, including the full path to the bag. In the example on this slide, we are verifying a bag called my underscore easily underscore exec underscore orders underscore bag, and it is located in the Bagot staging folder on the H drive. We also notice that the bag has been named with the recommended convention of using the underscore bag suffix to more visibly indicate that this folder is a Bagot bag. When the bag is successfully validated, we see the result is true results. Bagot will ensure that all the files are present in the bag and that none of the files have been altered in the transfer process through the Verify Valid option. Now let's take a look at how you would run this command. In order to run the Bagot command, you'll first need to open a command window. And the way you open a command window is by selecting the Start button from your lower left hand corner of your display and the Run option. This will display the Run window in which you will type in the CMD command to open up a command window. Hit the OK button and this will display a Windows command window, which generally defaults to your local Documents and Settings directory. Prior to running the bag command, you're going to want to make sure that your Java home environment variable is set. And the way you do this is by typing in the set command set at the command prompt. This will display an alphabetized listing of all the environmental variables that are set on your computer. You may need to scroll up to the section of the alphabet that allows you to see the Java Home environmental variable. 
In this case, we see that the Java Home Environmental Variable is assigned to our G drive, the portable disk device, as that is where, in this example, the Java Runtime Environment and the Bagot Command are installed. If you do not see the Java Home Environmental Variable set, you can either return to Section 2 for instructions on how to configure it or contact your IT support representative for assistance. Be aware that you will need administrative access on your computer in order to be able to assign this environmental variable. Before running the bag command in the DOS command window, you'll need to change directory with the cd command to the directory where the bag command lives. On the slide, we see that by using Windows Explorer, we can view the contents of the bag at bin directory and see the bag command files. And what we want to do is change to the same directory using our DOS command window. In our example, since the bag command lives on the G drive, we will first need to change the focus from the C drive to the G drive by issuing the G colon command. Then we can issue the CD command to change directory to the bin directory. Note in DOS that you will use a backslash as a separator between levels in the directory hierarchy rather than a forward slash. Then, after you change directory, you can then use the DOS dir command to view the files that are stored in that directory. On the slide, we see that the files returned from the dir command are the same as the files we see in the Windows Explorer view. Now let's turn to our computer to see a demonstration of how you'd retrieve a bag, verify the bag, and then extract the files from the bag.